Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California, here in Studio MC2 at QuickSurf Internet Studios. The Geekinator is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. And uh, with that, let's go ahead and get into uh, some of the cool stuff I found for this episode. Starting off over at the Wall Street Journal, and I, I don't generally uh, uh, comment m uh, much on or even point to things that the Wall Street Journal generally reports on, but I thought this, this was interesting. Um, basically, Microsoft's prescription uh, is more Bill Gates. The new CEO, as we reported on the last episode, we strongly suspected it would be uh, Satya Nadella, and it turns out that, yes, he is, in fact, the new CEO. Um, however, he is, he is uh, going to be the CEO with Bill Gates returning to a more central role at the, company, at the company and kind of being his mentor and that sort of thing. So it should be pretty interesting to see uh, uh, what comes of it. Uh, Bill Gates is giving up the chairman's role to become a technical advisor to Mr. Nadella, uh, who's been with Microsoft for 22 years. Um, so basically, the question that the article raises, and I kind of have the same question, is how free a hand Mr. Nadella will have in setting his own strategy as the company responds to business process, to an array of business challenges. So um, we'll see how it goes. You know, I'm curious if if uh, Bill Gates is going to allow... Um, uh, uh, t decisions that he may not necessarily agree with to go forward uh, should be pretty interesting to say the least. From uh, Chosun Ilbo over at english.chosun.com, Samsung and LG to unveil smartphones at Mobile Expo. Samsung and LG Electronics will unveil their latest smartphones at the Mobile World Conference 2014 that opens in Barcelona on February 24th. Um, so they are announcing that, uh, that they will hold an event at the fair to showcase its latest smartphones, including the Galaxy S5. So for those of you who are looking to get the Galaxy S5, it uh, should be showing up here uh, in the not too distant future. LG plans to unveil the G Pro 2. It's a dot device halfway between a tablet and a mobile, like Samsung's Galaxy, Galaxy Note series at the Expo. It could be launched in Korea even before the event, so pretty interesting, uh, be keeping an eye out for that for sure. The next story that uh, we've got is from Mashable. Uh, they have a report here that the Apple iPhone is still the top U.S. smartphone and uh, iOS is gaining traction. I I'm a little confused. Um, it starts off, despite the growing dominance of the Android operating system, which last time I checked, you know, in, to in terms of total volume, Android was way past uh, iPhones and iOS, but, um, so I'm curious what they're, what they're looking, uh, what, what they're measuring here. But anyway, um, Apple continues to maintain a healthy lead in the smartphone handset space, according to a report from Comscore on Tuesday. So part of this, I think is there, even though Android as a platform is huge compared to iOS, they're tracking individual phone sales. So Apple really only has the iPhone 5S the I, and the iPhone 5 and the iPhone 5C. No, wait, the iPhone 5S and the iPhone 5C. And then you can also get the 4S, I think, for 99 cents or free on a two-year contract. So they really only have like three iPhone models that you can choose from, um, as opposed to Android is a couple of dozen. <laughs> I mean, it is just absurd how many different hardware models you can get with Android. So I think that may be what they're tracking here. Um, the report tracks industry data covering the last three months of 2013 and offers a snapshot, snapshot of smartphone trends in the U.S. in the coming months. Based on Comscore research, the iPhone has a 41.8% market share in the U.S., 1.2% uptick from the previous quarter, 
with an indication that reports of the iPhone's potentially waning popularity were likely premature. So, and while the Android platform still maintains the lead in the U.S. at 51.5% in terms of hardware, Android phones make up just 26.1% of the overall U.S. smartphone market. So, pretty interesting. So, Apple, it appears, is in fact selling more phones, even though Android there for a, a bit really kind of, you know, in terms of platform really kind of took off. Microsoft is joining Sprint in a $750 million vow to U.S. schools. Uh, this is pretty cool. It's from Bloomberg Business Week. Basically, uh, Microsoft, uh, Apple, Verizon, and Sprint are among the companies pledging more than $750 million in computer software and services to an Obama administration project to give almost all U.S. students access to broadband and wireless technology. Barack Obama highlighted the commitments, which will be coupled with a $2 billion in funding from the Federal Communications Commission Reserves during a visit today to a school in the Washington suburb of Adelphi, Maryland. So pretty awesome. Uh, you know, schools don't, at least here in the U.S., schools don't get nearly near enough funding um, you know, as a parent, I'm, I'm always, you know, kind of aghast at, at the sheer lack of money that schools, it's like every time I turn around, the schools hit me up for cash for this or that or whatever. And it's like, I thought my taxes were paying for this. So, you know, it's one of those things where it uh, definitely, um, it, you know, it's just one of those things that schools need the money. So, Anyway, uh, from Mashable, Google Doodle competition for kids comes with an interactive twist. This is pretty neat. Google is once again encouraging kids to submit a logo design for its Doodle for Google contest. But this year, the selected winner will see their work animated and interactive on the home page. Just as Google Doodle sometimes feature more dynamic concepts, such as the epic multi-level multi Doctor Who Google Doodle game, the winning appli applicant will work with the Google team to animate it for the site. So pretty awesome. Uh, I, I think that, you know, that's just one of those things that encourages, you know, kids uh, curiosity and their imagination and, you know, and gives them an opportunity to see some of the, some of uh, their imagination put up on a very, very popular website. So pretty cool. From the register, NASA is in a quandary. Should Curiosity channel Fast and Furious and uh, do a Martian dune buggy jump? Well, they are not quite contemplating that, but uh, they do kind of have a bit of a pickle. NASA scientists are preparing to put Curiosity through its toughest challenge yet, scaling a meter-high sand dune that could leave the Mars rover stranded, immobilized. And they actually have a picture of this here, if you want to take a look. See that there? Bring this back where it's actually in focus. Yes. Uh, basically, what's what's going on is um, they are. The problem is they're trying to get to their next just destination, but uh, the the aluminum tires on the rover are really beat up, and they're trying to find a smooth path to take the rover on. One the smoothest path entails going over this meter high sand dune and unfortunately they don't want to risk getting it stuck in the sand dune because this thing's the size of an suv so they're basically you know a small suv so they're basically trying to drive a small suv over the sand dune once if they can get over the sand dune then uh the path is significantly less rocky the other path they can take is uh unfortunately really really rough and so uh, it's just one of those things where they uh, kind of have to, you know, make that decision. We'll be keeping an eye on this to see what they uh, decide in the not too distant future. But no, they're not actually going to jump the rover, even though in my personal opinion, I think that would be awesome. From uh, truthdive.com, NASA gets ready to assemble a next generation big telescope 
The U.S. Space Agency NASA has said Monday its next-generation James Webb Space Telescope, the successor to the 24-year-old Hubble Space Telescope, is on track for a planned launch in 2014, and all the pieces of the most powerful space telescope ever are ready for assembly at NASA. So pretty awesome. Uh, we'll be keeping an eye on this. The James Webb Space Telescope will be the most powerful space telescope ever assembled, uh, capable, of, capable of spotting the most distant objects in the universe, providing pictures of the first galaxies formed and spotting unknown planets around distant stars. So this should be pretty cool. Uh, I'll be definitely keeping an eye on, on the progress of this as it continues. That's it for this edition of The Geekinator. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes, which you can find online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you haven't already done so. And for those of you who have, thank you so much for subscribing. And with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. I'll see you then. Bye.